The X-Men Fantastic Four four-issue miniseries by Chip Zdarsky, the Dodsons, and Laura Martin has concluded. With the fate of Franklin Richards and the dynamics between the X-Men Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom at least tentatively resolved for now. Today I'll answer, what's the outcome of this miniseries for Franklin, the Fantastic Four, and the X-Men? How the fourth and final issue adds merit to my Kate Pride can't resurrect because of Doctor Doom theory? And how does this series conclusion predict what comes next in the Dawn of X for all of these players? I've got a few cool predictions and possible next events in Marvel's Dawn of X to come. Welcome to Crack and Krakoa number 63, The Fate of Franklin Richards and the Future Doom Wars vs. the X-Men. I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of Comic Book Herald. If you like the CBH YouTube channel or podcast, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Spoilers for Discuss Comics and all of X-Men Fantastic Four 1 through 4 will follow. So, what's the deal in X-Men Fantastic Four as we head into the fourth issue? Franklin Richards' immense Omega-level reality-altering powers are diminishing. Reed Richards, smartest man in the Marvel Universe, can't crack it. He can't quite figure out why Franklin's powers are diminishing the way they are since 2015 Secret Wars. So, the X-Men show up to bring him, quote-unquote, home to Krakoa, Franklin Richards being a mutant with, you know, the son of the Fantastic Four, of course. It's revealed here that Reed Richards made it so Franklin's X-Gene is clouded and he can't use Krakoan gates. Franklin, Valeria, and Kate Pride, a, a sort of friend of, um, of Franklin Richards dating back to 1987's X-Men vs. Fantastic Four miniseries, they all run away and they wind up meeting with Doctor Doom, who offers oh so benevolently to fix Franklin's powers. Everyone comes together here on Doom Island, where Latveria's mutants live, and issue number three ended with Doom more or less framing Krakoa's own for murdering a Latverian mutant, and then sicking a bunch of Doomified Sentinels on everyone while he finalizes powering up good old Frankie. Early on in the issue, we do see Doctor Doom manipulate K-Pride with a wave of his hand. He's able to actually physically alter Kate's powers to go from phasing to heavying up, a la Vision, right? Increasing her mass, increasing her density. Sort of the way uh, Leland did to Wolverine way back in uh, Uncanny X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga. This also ties back to my theory that Doctor Doom is actually at least in part responsible for the inability to resurrect Kate Pride. From my previous theory, you know, I sort of supposition that it's clear that Doom resents the hell out of Professor X's Krakoa, right? And the implication that anyone could be superior to him. So it's, it's obviously hypocrisy coming from Dr. Doom, but I could see Doom viewing the rise of Krakoa as the time to implement Kate Pride as his potential sleeper agent, right? He could have some control over her genetic structure that he implemented way back again in that 87 uh, X-Men vs. Fantastic Four miniseries. I really think there's something to that, seeing him literally just, you know, turn Kate sort of into his own plaything here. Of course, unsurprisingly, Kitty breaks free and pauses, you know, long enough, or pauses Doom long enough to let Franklin make a decision for himself on how he wants to handle things, which ultimately is to stop the madness, right? Susan Richards teams up with the X-Men, in particular Nightcrawler, in a very cool sequence to halt the raging Latviathans. These are Doom's uber catchy name for his clearly Doom Sentinels, but he's absolutely outraged that someone would call them Sentinels because they attack humans and mutants alike, he says, in, in perfect, you know, faw Doom outrage, and, uh, and all these attackers who are working under Doom's thumb. Jim Zdarsky here, I do have to call out, such a good fit for both, I, I love him on the Fantastic Four, I loved his Marvel 2 one, and I would have loved to see, see him take over the relaunch Fantastic Four um, instead of Dan Slott, but you know, him doing the X-Men is a great fit as well, I love his dialogue for Nightcrawler in this action sequence. I would so be excited to see him wholly integrated into the Dawn of X lineup. I think he'd be a glorious fit for a Nightcrawler ongoing or a bunch of other titles as well. From here, Professor X has a number of power plays in this issue, including taking the Latverian mutants back to Krakoa. Doom's expressing all manner of increasingly incredulous performative outrage, but Professor X stands up to his BS and bluster, augmented by the fact here that Doom is a hologram and isn't actually there and can't ultimately do that much. The mutants have expressed both supreme confidence and shocking naivety throughout the Dawn of X, so it wouldn't shock me if Doom let them take the Latverry mutants with some sort of coding hidden in their genes. Perhaps, you know, using something that Reed had previously thought of, but we'll get there in a minute. So I, I could definitely see Dr. Doom here sort of feigning that he's allowing his Latverian subjects to go with the Krakoan mutants rather than actually accepting a defeat. Don't think that this is the last we're going to see of this plot thread, right? You don't bring a bunch of Dr. Doom's own <laughs> mutant kind onto Krakoa without something else to follow. And I think we're going to see a lot of, oh, this is setting up a lot of big picture events that might follow. 
So following that team up and taking down Doom, there's a lot of apologizing by everyone, although there's still honestly a lot of redemption to be sought uh, across the board. You know, I think Reed has a lot to apologize here. Sue definitely has a lot to sort of reconcile in her reaction to her son being a mutant. And then, of course, Prof uh, Professor X and company, you know, barge into the task force home and, you know, demand that they take their son. And, and obviously that's not a fantastic look either. So net net, Franklin gets to spend a bunch of time on Krakoa with the gate right into the Baxter building so he can be with family also. It's a pretty good compromise. And, uh, you know, it's a good fit for this team. I look forward to seeing Franklin involved on Krakoa and potentially in upcoming stories in the Dawn of X. It's not entirely inconceivable, for example, that Franklin could at least be around now during the upcoming X of Swords, and just given his power set, given his status as an Omega-level reality-warping mutant, that's particularly exciting. After walking Franklin back to the Baxter building, Professor X and Magneto march up to Reed's office, and under the guise of friendship, but what they're actually there to do is to wipe Reed's mind of how to make what he called his Code hyphen X, which masked Franklin's mutant gene and could be repurposed to cure mutants. Charlie lets him keep the memory of erasing this knowledge just to really hammer home the point as well. Unless I'm forgetting something, this feels like the clearest example of the Krakoa X-Men taking deliberate public action against the traditional structures of Marvel superheroes. It's easy to side against Reed, it almost literally always is, but Professor X and Magneto walk into his home and assault him. This is an attack. Again, I'm not saying they're wrong, but it's almost easy to overlook how big a shift this is for the X-Men's place in this world, right? The X-Men don't march into the homes of Marvel's first family, into, you know, Avengers Mansion, right, would be the other place, and, and take action like this, or they haven't necessarily historically, you know, from the top, right, from the leadership, and again, it's not a secret, they're letting Reed retain the memory. I do have to mention here, and I'll probably talk about this again, Dr. Doom's very close in intelligence to Reed. So are several other figures, right, in the Marvel Universe. We could throw out Amadeus Cho, we could throw out Tony Stark, we could throw out Hank Pym, we could throw out T'Challa, all these geniuses, right? It's not inconceivable somebody else could land on Reed's codex in, in, in the future. What's their plan then? What's the X-Men's plan for, you know, the next invention? Dr. Noom all but promises war with Krakoa by the end of this issue, right? In private conversation with Valeria Richards, which is a dynamic continued from the Hickman era Fantastic Four, and, and really all the way back to the Wade and Waringo run on FF where this is initially established that I absolutely love, that these two have this private relationship, that they talk about these things openly, even though clearly Doom and the, you know, Reed Richards are you know sort of these mortal enemies. He was trying to secretly siphon, Dr. Noom that is, uh, some of Franklin's power as he was, you know, quote unquote, trying to help him. No shock there. But there's a war brewing here between Dr. Doom's library and Krakoa. Personally, I can't wait, right? That is an event I am super excited for uh, in whatever shape it might tape. And I, I do have to call it too, like, this makes a lot of sense. Doom is a longtime X-Men enemy. Um, it's easy to think of him probably not necessarily being like a mutant hating person, but he definitely resents the heck out of him. It's a very Lex Luthor looking at Superman sort of thing where, you know, it's like they've they've evolved into these powers, you know, unfairly, right? They didn't earn them or something. And he believes that he ultimately it has to be the, the stage of evolution beyond them. To be even smarter is what he tells Valeria is actually where the evolution is going to happen in his case. So this war is coming. He's a longtime enemy of the X-Men. Historically, we've seen him experiment on like Silver Surfer for Power Cosmic, on his Guardians in the Latverian Prometheus arc of Thor written by Kieran Gilling. It's not surprising that mutants would be in line in sort of a similar vein. Maybe he's trying to tap into now their resources to make himself, of course, ultimately for Doom. It's always about the accumulation of power. I also suspect that given the Doom Namor uneasy alliance that has long existed, you know, look back to some of the earliest issues of Fantastic Four or 70 supervillain team up if you don't know what I'm talking about, I could see Doom angling for the call of the Phoenix that Namor put out as well, right? So this was back in an uh, issue of Avengers written by Jason Aaron not too long ago where we see Namor who is very, very much in a supervillain uh, enemy of the Avengers stance calling out to the Phoenix, right? Reaching back to those Avengers vs. X-Men 2012 event days when he was part of the Phoenix Five, when he knew a part of the Phoenix. He's now calling to the Phoenix entity as a whole saying, give me that power back. I need it to destroy the Avengers. I could see something where Namor can have the Avengers and then Doom can have revenge on X-Men and Fantastic Four, or alternatively and more likely, I could easily see Doom capturing a Phoenix-fueled Namor and using his smarts, Doom smarts, as he alludes to Valeria, to siphon Namor's powers now in his own even greater power grab. I think, again, there's always a power play beyond what everyone else is thinking that Doom tends to be after. So where else did we net out? Well, Franklin is a part of Krakoa, if not a permanent resident. Presumably, this means his DNA is now a part of Mr. Sinister's collection. We saw way back, and I think it was uh, an incoming 
keys incoming number one that mr sinister you know we know he's trying to get omega level mutants and it was set up that he's most particularly excited about franklin richards he says need it mutant kind's motivations are not so pure in bringing franklin to krakoa we don't know exactly what sinister and the council are doing with the dna or even if sinister schemes are different than what professor x magneto and moira have in mind aren't they always after all but we do know krakoa's literal number one natural resource is to protect omega level mutants and now they have franklin on board Beast also mentions during their brief training session that we see that Franklin's powers don't deplete as quickly on Krakoa. That it's kind of a throwaway line, but that definitely has to factor into the ways that Franklin is going to play into the story as well. The fact that his powers are not depleting when surrounded by mutants, when on the sentient mutant island. What is it specifically about Krakoa's presence that is changing the way Franklin's you know power depletion is operating? That's going to be interesting to see as well. There's a tentative alliance between the X-Men and Fantastic Four for now, although again, Reed's mind was tampered with by Charles Xavier, and he knows it. Historically, wiping a powerful hero's mind tends to lead to problems. The callback referenced here is, of course, New Avengers by Jonathan Hickman, where Doctor Strange wipes Captain America's memory of destroying incursion planets with the Infinity Gauntlet, and eventually during the Avengers run, Cap remembers, and he's understandably furious. The intriguing difference with Reed right now is that he knows. He was not made to forget. And likewise, this doesn't need to be a secret from his family or really anyone. The Codex was made known in X-Men Fantastic Four number one. And wrong as the first family may perceive it, they know Reed did it. This isn't one of his secret projects that he needs to like run around and not tell Sue or Ben or Johnny or anyone about, right? Aside from unless he's just ashamed that he made it in the first place and has to even tell them what Professor X and Magneto did, but I don't know why he would do that. There's more too to be said about Reed's research on God power, what that means for Franklin's mutant abilities, and even his research into Krakoan gates. Plus, Reed is not the only mind in the Marvel Universe capable investigating these types of issues. What if someone else cracks Code X? Then what do Charles Xavier and Magneto do? Are they going to bust into the homes of literally everyone capable of this type of technology and wipe their memories? Again, I wouldn't necessarily put it past them, right? It's a very, you know, we need to protect mutant kind at all costs, but that just seems, it seems almost beyond the scope of what they are capable of doing, at least at this point. It really raises some interesting dynamics. Reed Richards is, of course, a unique subject, too. I could see Professor X and Magneto saying, we won't do this all the time, but Reed Richards is the smartest man in the universe, and he did this without thinking, right? He created this thing that can get rid of mutant powers in, in sort of a throwaway effort just to keep his son at home, you know? But he didn't think through the protocol. So again, it's, it's not me saying, I think, Reed, or I think Professor X and Magneto are wrong in doing this, of, of saying, Reed, you made a huge mistake. But again, obviously, wiping someone's memory without permission is a barrier and a line to cross, and it's going to lead to something. That doesn't just get, doesn't just happen. I dug this series a lot. I would really love Zdarsky on either Fantastic Four or in the X-Men universe more regularly. Uh, but for the time being, X-Men Fantastic Four 1 through 4, it's a good read. Uh, I love what it sets up. Obviously, I'm excited about the possibilities of, of the ways this could continue to play out, both for Franklin, uh, for Doctor Doom, versus you know, kind of all of Krakoa, and just the steps that Professor X and, and company are willing to take against you know teams like the Fantastic Four that historically they would they would be way more it'd be way more important to them to have that alliance it'd be way more important to them to say we are friends and we are on your side and we will not do things to harm you and instead here they're really sort of bullying Reed into position and saying fall in line you need to work with us and uh, again I don't know that they're wrong to do that so uh, yeah, this series was cool. Definitely let me know what you think about X-Men Fantastic Four and some of these theories in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Uh, for those of you who like Comic Book Herald, go on over to patreon.com slash comic book herald for ways to support the site and get some cool benefits. In particular, I want to thank everyone in the mysterious benefactors tier who gets a shout out here on the page. I'm Dave. You can find all my work at comicbookherald.com. You can find me at Comic Book Herald online and look for the best comics ever in my Marvelous Year podcast. For more, and of course you haven't already, uh, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the YouTube content and video here. Again, it helps me an awful lot. So thanks everybody for listening. I want to hear your comments. I want to hear your thoughts and enjoy the comics. <laughs>